Welcome to Mintel's Little Conversation podcast. Welcome to Mintel's Little Conversation, where our experts bring you fresh ideas and new perspectives on how consumers eat, drink, shop, groom, and think. I'm Edward Bergen, consultant at Mintel, specializing in food and drink, all round foodie. And as always, I'm a massive hummus fanatic. So at Mintel, we're always asked to predict the future, which isn't always easy. Um, We get regular questions from clients. What's going to happen in my category? How should we prepare? What do I do? Lots of stuff has happened, but I don't know how to react. So what we try and do often is understand how trends are moving and how consumer behavior is changing. But over the past few years, we've sunk our teeth into another goldmine of information, that of patents. And my knowledge of the patent industry is pretty limited. So this is going to be quite fun for me. But as far as my knowledge stretches, a patent is, I guess, a legal protection of an invention. But actually, I'm going to leave it to our fabulous guests and experts who are here with us today. So I have the pleasure of being joined by CEO of strategic patent intelligence company, Cypher, Nigel Schweitzer, and our very own Mintel patent guru uh, and global analyst, Neha Srivastov. And I'm going to ask you guys to introduce yourselves a little bit. So, Nigel, do you want to kick off? Look, thank you very much to uh, to you, Edward, for inviting us on to the podcast. I'm delighted to be here. So, without wanting to go and dampen everyone's enthusiasm, I'm formerly a lawyer. Uh, for 30 years, I've been specialising, focusing on helping companies create and maximise the value of their intangible assets, the ones that you can't kick or touch. But as you say, about eight years ago, we set up Cypher as an analytics company. And I'll talk about that journey, I'm sure, as we go through this discussion. Okay, Neha. Hi, everyone. I'm Neha Srivastava. I work with Mintel as a patent analyst in food, drink, beauty, and personal care. Before joining Mintel, I, I used to work as a consultant in different Uh, patent-related categories, uh, including biomedicals, food, drinks, cosmetics, and everything. And yeah, I'm based in London. Brilliant. So we're going to get into that a little bit more detail later about how we, um, you know, you talk about your role at Bintel. I had the pleasure of working in Nehal's team um, for a long time, so I'm really excited to have her on. Um, So as we said, my knowledge is limited, and I just want to start and probably reflect some of our listeners as well and just ask a very basic question. I think, Neha, you want to kick this one off, but what is a patent? So I'll just elaborate on what you discussed about patent. So patent is, technically speaking, it is a type of intellectual property which provide patent owner a right, exclusive right to exclude others from using, making or uh, making profit out of, or selling in the, the invention without the permission of the uh, patent owner for a limited period of years. So it is, uh, this right is provided by the government to the patent owner in exchange of full disclosure of the patent or the invention to the public. So in a way, we can say uh, this invention or the full disclosure is available to the public, but they cannot use it or make profit out of it without the permission of the patent owner. And how long do they have that permission for? Yeah, so on an average, it's 20 years from the, f- from the time they file the patent, but it sometimes more or less plus or minus five years based on the situation or, or the problems associated or delays from the patent office. So there can be plus five years or minus five years or less than that also, yeah. Wow, okay. And when they file a patent, does, does, do they always appear? after 20 years or does something always appear or does sometimes they, they file it and it, you know, is there a, can we a percentage of how many companies actually ends up as something is innovate, something is created as a result? Do we know that? So it depends. It, it is based on how strong your invention or your idea is. So sometimes uh, companies file a patent, but it cannot go beyond because examiners reject it in between saying that it is very obvious invention. So you have to every time prove uh, prove it like your invention is novel. It has uh, some advantages which which is not already known to uh, the public and so on. So it's up to you how you take your uh, patent proceeding further. So it depends upon that. 
Wow. Okay. So I think we've got an uh, an idea, but actually, you know, the filing of patents is one thing, or patents is one thing. Um, but we've got Nigel with us, and what you do is a bit special. What you're doing is creating insight around you know, the filing of these. So could you actually talk a little bit about Cipher and what you do and why it's really interesting for industries and for companies? No, I'd, I'd like to do that. And I'd also like to build on a couple of comments that Niha made about patents. So you have this legal process. There are 44 million patents in the world which are active, owned by a million uh, companies. And you could look upon that as a as an arsenal of legal rights that could be used against others. But if you turn that on its head, what you end up with is the largest library of scientific information in the world, because this is information. And as Niha said, you don't get the right to get this monopoly, this qualified monopoly, unless you're willing to disclose it. So you've got this amazing equation that companies are willing to set put in 60-page documents describing their very latest and best innovation in exchange for the opportunity of getting this legal right. So the reason that Mintel and Cypher work together isn't because Mintel is turning itself into a law firm, but because Mintel wants to extract using machine learning this predictive nature because what people invent today, they may do tomorrow. So you said at the get-go, Edward, that predicting the future is hard, but sometimes you get some tips, you get the clues in the information. People don't file for patents for fun. A patent costs about $50,000 over its term by the time you've applied to the office and got it drafted and renewed it because keeping patents over a period of time takes longer and longer. So not only do you know that they were serious because they invested their money, but you also get this technical description. So back to your question, uh, what does Cypher do? Well, think of information as I know Mintel does in so many areas as a sort of hierarchy that you have data and a big pile of data is frankly useless. So me sending across to Niha 44 million 26 page uh, 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 60 page documents in 26 languages, I don't think would get a thank you from Niha and the Mintel team. So above that kind of data layer is, is analysis, which is we can sort those patents into who owns them, what they relate to, that's our secret source we may come back to. Mintel write about technologies. They don't write about patents. And so that ability to do that third layer. So we've got the data layer, we've got the analysis layer, and then boom, you've got that ability for Mintel to extract insight. And all Mintel customers want, all Cypher customers want is insight. They don't want data. Uh, isn't it fascinating? Because straight away, I, I, I listen to what you said and go, okay, you talked about you track them by who's launched it. And you could get one company going, I want to know what my competitors launch straight away. Um, and then I know what my competitor is going to do. And I need to think about that industry or that technology or whatever it might be more going forward. Or it could be, um, you know, just understanding a trend. Like we track trends um, up to now. And then we try and predict trends going forward. But it seems like we can actually predict with a bit more of assur- assurance because they're, they're what, tracked for 20 years. And then you could sort of see if, if X number of companies have all filed patents for a particular industry, like a, a flavor or plant-based or a new texture in whatever food it might be. We can then go, this is going to be a big thing in 15 years time or 10 years time. Um, therefore, you should think about it now. So I, I, I straight away you're going, this is, this is brilliant in terms of insight. I love insight. Yeah, absolutely. And, and we should think about timeframes as well. Uh, Niha's absolutely right. The legal right potentially lasts up to 20 years. But most technology trends that uh, Mintel's ecosystem is studying aren't what was happening 
20 years ago. It's what's going to happen in the next one, three or five years. Uh, but you're right. Trend data uh, can be built on what happened yesterday. So uh, if Nestle and Unilever are investing in technology A or technology B for the last three years and their number of patents is increasing, uh, the compound annual growth rate of that of that pile of information is growing. It's not like organizations typically wake up in the morning and start doing something they've never done before. And, and, and nor do they typically wake up one morning and stop an activity that they've been doing for five straight years. So because momentum is such an important uh, indicator of the future, that's why I really smiled when I saw the title of this conversation, The Ultimate Crystal Ball. Of course, you know, uh, patent data doesn't predict the future, but it gives you lots of clues that without it, you wouldn't have. So we want to get into this around the data, but I think Nihal is the best person to ask because you're our in-house um, analyst for all things you know, patents. So how do you use patent data? What do you do? What do you do with it um, at Mintel? And then we'll get into that discussion. So I think three, four years back, the higher man- management of Mintel got the idea to include the patent insight in our existing ex- insights. And the reason behind this is to provide a scientific backbone to what we predict. So we uh, uh, so. With the help of Patent Insight Report, we provide a holistic overview like what consumer want and why, what is uh, there in uh, currently in market in terms of new products since we have a global new product database which covers majority of products launched across the globe. And with the help of patent, we try to identify what we can see in future. So with the help of Cypher, we get to know like, okay, we get, we get all the patents related to specific category and then we analyze and categorize them to identify the insight, like who are the competitors as Nigel mentioned, what are the different geographies where they, these patents are filed. And not only the big competitors, it also helps in identifying who are the new small players, maybe some startups or some inventor with uh, which is coming with some disruptive technology. So it helps our clients to understand a holistic overview related to particular category in terms of everything, like from the start, what consumer wants and why, because most of the uh, patents or inventions are associated with the problems associated with the previous uh, products. So the majorly it is uh, initiated by what consumer wants, then uh, there are problems associated with the existing products. So the inventors try to overcome those challenges and or, or to overcome those problems associated with the product and they come up with the new invention. Yeah, like straight away, I'm thinking of, um, we've had for years, people asking us about like plant-based processed burgers and then a burger they always have problems that it tasted a bit bland and the texture was not quite right and then i've used your data to see the patents um, that have been filed that 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 talk about texture in a plant-based burger to make them juicier to make them more like meat to make them and we've seen that you've shown me a whole host of them before um on your analysis i I, i'm thinking straight away you're going okay there's going to be a lot of work done in terms of texture going forward in a plant-based burger category. So no, straight away, sorry, I, I interrupted you, but I thought that was very interesting. Yeah, and in, in that uh, topic only, actually I came across one patent which is talking about providing the sound which is uh, which happens when you cook actual meat, the sizzling sound of that. So there is a patent related to that also in case of plant-based meat. They are uh, modifying it in such a way that, that you, when you cook it, you get the sound of like you are cooking the actual meat. <laughs> it's crazy. So, yeah. So inventors are, yeah, inventors are taking all these minute details in the mind while doing such innovations. Uh, it, it's really interesting. I know we're going to get into some case studies more, but I've got a question for you, Nigel, on this. You, when we talked before this record recording today, you talked about the relationship with Mintel and the data is quite unique for Cypher. Um, so this is so generally we're the only ones doing using you like this, or and and other companies use Cypher in very different ways. 
It's a good question. I mean, we uh, have been in a relationship with Mintel now for close on three years, and uh, our relationship is unique. You are the only company in the world uh, in your sector, the FMCG sector, that is publishing marketing intelligence using that crystal ball, that predictive information. So it's a very special relationship. Uh, but to explain uh, how it came about, you need to understand that this alt- this largest library of scientific information in the world is like a pandora's box of toys for the for the industry and we started by providing this information to patent owners our clients include google and facebook and british aerospace and arm large companies who use technology to differentiate their companies to give them competitive advantage to create an innovation mode. I mean, the correlation between patents and innovation is thought to be very strong. And uh, patents cost about $40 billion a year. That's how much the world spends on patents every year. And companies need to go and spend that money wisely. So with that much money at stake, we were the first company to try and not help companies file another one, As I've often said, I'm sure uh, with 44 million patents, number 44 million and one, it's going to be a fantastic contribution to the world. But it's it's very interesting to know what the whole population looks like. What's the trend in the technology? What are competitors doing? So we help companies build portfolios that are of the right size and a good value of money, good value uh, for money. Now, very important, I say that this spectrum of people who are interested in this information source is becoming broader and deeper. So Mintel is a great example of using the information, not for patent owners, but for market researchers, for food scientists. You know, there's tens of thousands of Mintel customers, the vast majority of which don't get brought up on patents, but want to know the information from it. And if you take another example, we work with the financial services sector. The financial services sector are equally not lawyers, but they want the data to help investors understand what the assets are, which are owned by the company. So again, not to know what their weapons are, but to understand this intangible asset story. So as a quick data point, intangible assets account for about 70 to 80% of the enterprise value of companies, but none of that information is on the balance sheet. So organizations like Cypher fill that gap to enable you to have additional insight into what a company owns and what it's doing. So I think Mintel can claim pioneer rights as being uh, one of the organizations that's forced Cypher to go and think more imaginatively about the increasing uses of its data. But the spectrum now goes from patent owners through to market intelligence companies, through to financial investors, to Mm. insurers. I think this is, I think as you said at the start of the discussion, this is a potential gold mine of data that's never properly been exploited. It's fascinating. I, as I said, I'm mostly using Neha's analysis to provide stories and excitement to my work. And I'm working consultancy sort of projects. So we'll add this in as that kind of often predictive trends and we'll use Neha's insight. But it gets us straight into that. Do you want to talk about the breadth of requests and then talk about some of the case studies, Neha, about how and then how you use Cypher to um, answer those questions? Sure. So the first thing, the majority of thing we do is providing the patent insight related to a specific category. And in addition to that, the answering uh, client's question related to what we can see in future, how different companies are overcoming the challenges associated with the product. So we work on wide variety of requests. So sometimes the co- companies come up with, I didn't, they want to know what is going on or what a specific competitor is perform working in particular category. So we try to uh, identify or extract those patents with the help of Cypher artificial intelligence tool. And then we analyze those patents to identify, okay, what they are doing in particular technology or particular uh, domain area. And sometimes company want to know, okay, they are not uh, interested in any specific company. They want to know what is uh, disruptive innovation in particular 
category so in th- in that case also we try to identify or segregate first the patents related to that particular category and then mm. we we'll go through each and every patent to see what are the different inventions and how superior they are from the pre- their previous ones so and accordingly we provide the insight related to okay what is the disruptive in- innovation in particular category who is doing this so most of the time this kind of disruptive innovation are done by the start startups or small inventors so it help our clients to understand first of all who the competitor is second who can be their potential partner because startups don't have the capacity to prepare a manufacturing mm. or production unit so in so in uh, to to avoid that they they either license or sell their patent to the big companies and they those big companies uh, they they don't have to do everything from the scratch they just have to buy or license the patent from the startup and they can produce the, or launch the product in market so these kind of uh, requests we get from our clients and it help them to understand to look for the broader future road map of particular technology or category i i assume you're not reading 60 pages every time to get that i assume the way cipher works is that you're they'll provide you with that kind of what is this pattern really saying in a, a using the database right yeah up to some extent but you know uh, for uh, getting into know what exactly the particular patent or invention is doing you have to read the patent Please. you see how you're reading 60 page reports for everyone okay Oh, wow. it's worth, no, but it's worth jumping in there, right? So uh, um, uh, Niha's all willing to read a 60-page document. Cypher reads 61 million documents in an hour. So, so <laughs> Niha doesn't have uh, enough time to read 61 million documents. So what is the role of machine learning? Why have we adopted that technology to solve the problem? Because Niha wants to press a button and to unsee all the patents owned by Nestle in the area of hand uh, in, in the area of gut health. We'll just stay with uh, that example. Mm. So and of course because you're not interested in what happened 20 years ago Niha, no doubt you're going to ask for those documents that got filed in uh, in the last three years. And because Niha's native tongue, well, may have many native languages, but let's assume English is one of a, a very popular language for Niha to study in, maybe she'll focus on European and US documents. So you can see Cypher is asked to go into the pile of 61 million to pull out the documents from Nestle in the last three years relating to gut health. Mm. Uh, in, and all of a sudden, now there's five, 10 documents. All good. Niha is a human, and humans can do insight in the way that the machines can't. But look at that balance between perspiration and inspiration. When 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 Niha starts her work, there's been a machine that didn't mind reading 61 million documents, presents it, that takes away 80% of the manual work. Niha still needs to do that insightful job, but only on 10 documents. That sounds like a fair trade, Niha. Wouldn't you agree? Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Do you want to go into that topic, like when uh, into a case study, Niha, about when you've, you know, particular industry that we're being asked about a lot um, and how you're using, you know, Cypher's data to, to, to bring out insights? Sure. So I'll share one of the case study we did for uh, related to gut health. So as you know, there is a lot of buzz related to gut health, probiotics and prebiotics nowadays in different social media platforms. So the client was interested in knowing what is going on beyond pro and prebiotics in this category in terms of ingredients. So with the help of Cypher, since gut health is a very broad category and if you have have to do everything on your own it will be like months of job to do so with the help of cypher we uh, tried to segregate all the patents related to gut health specifically for food and drinks we uh, we removed all the patents related to pharmaceuticals or medic- medicine related things and when we analyzed those patents we we identified like okay probiotics prebiotics uh, there is development going on in terms of invention different types of probiotics and prebiotics are being invented but in addition to that there are in 
ingredients like botanicals fermented ingredients and now postbiotics these are some of the upcoming ingredients which on which the inventors are focusing more on botanicals because the one reason is it is sustainable everyone is moving towards the green thing so innovators are also uh, looking into something which is sustainable and more acceptable among the consumers so majority of inventions related to ingredients for gut health are associated with botanicals fermented extracts postbiotics all those are into the natural things stuff so we identified these things and uh, we thought okay gut health is uh, in in terms of ayurveda chinese herbal medicines and all these things so gut health was always the center of attention there but now in Inventors are also look, uh, taking care of this. So we found many patents which are talking about improving gut health and indirectly improving the other body functions like improving eye health, bone health, providing proper growth and nutrition because everything you eat go into your stomach and if it is not absorbed by your uh, stomach, it will not uh, get into different body parts and provide the effect. So we found some... Uh, important innovations like uh, improving gut health and indirectly improving your cognitive health because of gut brain axis and yeah and an- another interesting topic which came into limelight was immune health because of this covid pandemic we have seen a lot of limelight into the immune health and we have found that uh, there are uh, inventors who are working on this category like mm. improving gut health and indirectly improving or supporting the immune health so these were some of the insights we generated and we got a very uh, good feedback from the client we were very excited about this insight because this is something additional we provided to the client it's, it, it's amazing how um you know the, the level of detail we can now give rather than just going on sort of consumer questions where we've said are you interested in gut health and most clients say, you know most consumers say yes this is really interesting to me and it, we know it's becoming more popular but then to be able to say and there's going to be expansions in it because there's been a $50,000 investment in a patent related to a technology it means that it's something that probably will be launched in some way or another so we can really give them quite a strong uh, assurance i love that i wanted to ask one more question before we sort of sum up uh, sort of a question to nigel obviously um do you and you're welcome to take names out but we work with obviously our clients um in in this way using our data but are there any really good case studies where you uh, an example where you've provided patent data to your clients and you know they've reacted in a certain way i know that's a very vague question but you work sometimes you work in very different sort of ways with your data yeah i'll, I'll give a couple of examples if i may i'd also like to give a quick plug for the cypher vision podcast uh, series we are trying to go and help the world understand the importance of this data set to make evidence based decisions just a couple of examples but they're all there for you for you for your listeners to turn to if they want to know more about this topic one with Jonathan Haskell who's uh, on the um, Bank of England and Monetary Policy Committee talking about capitalism without capital the rise of intangible assets really interesting discussion but also another one to tie in with your comments Nihar about storytelling with data uh, there's one by um, Arm talking about how do you use patent data to tell stories to the CTO, to tell stories to the CEO? Because you can't go into a room and say, would you like to hear about patents? But if you can go and say, would you like to know about technology trends? Would you like to know what your competitors are doing? Uh, Then there's a very different reply. And I think that's what Nihar and the analyst team at Mintel have done so very well. But just to give one example, uh, uh, there's a case study on our website relating to buying companies. So when you buy companies, you typically only get to do one. So if you decide you want to buy a company in a particular area, you get a list typically from an investment bank and they go and say you can buy companies A, B, C, D, or E, and they'll give you a list of five or six companies. And they do that from the information they know. 
Now, Cypherer was used by an organization to type in and say, who else in the world is working on this technology area? And it came up with the list of six because they were all participants, but came up with a list of another six. And of course, it wouldn't be a great case study if it didn't turn out they bought one of the list, uh, one of the companies on the second list of companies. So I always think that data, the price and the value of data is the cost of not knowing. We should probably pay credit to Rumsfeld, bearing in mind he sadly passed away this week. And he had that expression about unknown unknowns. You can all make decisions based on the data that you're looking at, but at what price do you pay for not knowing about other information? And I, you know, I talked about this 1 million patent owners and 44 million patent documents. It is impossible, even for the most expert analysts in the world, to know every company who's competing in a space. So let machine learning do that crawling for you. Why don't you look at the history of the world's inventions, pull out documents. It won't necessarily, it's not a lucky eight ball. It won't necessarily tell you what to do, but it will give you information from which you can extract insight. You've, you've sort of given us a beautiful conclusion to all of this. Um, so, because I think we're probably going to have to finish it there. So it can be a nice, you know, commute to listen to if people are on a commute or, or sitting at their desk at home still. Um, thank you so much, Nigel, for coming. And Neha for joining as well from Mintel because it, it is such a fascinating topic and I really enjoyed it. Also, a quick one. If you want to hear more about this topic, because we don't talk about patents every week on Little Conversation, your podcast is called Cypher Vision. That's right. So please check that out because you know, it's such a, a big topic and there's so much we can learn. So you know, check that one out because it should be a really interesting one to have a look at. Um, otherwise, thank you all for listening. Um, please subscribe, rate, review. This podcast is uh, in all the platforms that you find a podcast. Um, so you know, spread the word about it and share it. Um, you know, share Mintel's little conversation. If you want to know more about Mintel, or Cypher, you know, check out our websites, um, head over to mintel.com, check us on social media, um, and we're on LinkedIn and Instagram and all the social media platforms. Um, otherwise, you know, thank you for listening and check out our next podcast shortly. So have a great one, everyone. Thank you so much. <laughs>